Hey Internet, welcome to another Microbiology Basics. In this episode, we're going to take a look specifically at the endoplasmic reticulum. Hey, so welcome back to another episode of Microbi Microbiology. Yeah, Microbiology. I've been recording anatomy videos all day. I almost wanted to call this Microbiology Bites. Anyhow, this is Microbiology Basics, and in this one, we're going to take a look at the endoplasmic reticulum. But before we do, if you haven't seen already, I am currently running for state representative seat 127 in, out here in the District 127. So if you'd like more information about that, please be sure to check down below for links to my social media as well as my website. Your support allows somebody with common sense to go to office. Anyhow, back to why you're here and it has nothing to do with anatomy. It's all about the microbiology. So microbiology, let's talk about endoplasmic reticulum. First of all, the endoplasmic reticulum is considered an organelle. It is found within the cytoplasm of eukaryotic cells. Now, if you don't know what eukaryotic cells are, I believe the video is for free. It's an anatomy series. We talk about the basics of cells, prokaryote versus eukaryote. You can check that out. So the endoplasmic reticulum is a series of canals that connect the nucleus with the rest of the cell. Now, endoplasmic means within the plasma, while reticulum means a network. So it's a network within the plasma. Bad science. A lot of the K-12 science books used to, and some of them still do, they show the endoplasmic reticulum being something separate, often its own, separate from the nuclear envelope. And that's not true, okay? The ER network is actually continuous with the nuclear envelope. It forms a network that makes up a large portion of the total volume of the cytoplasm in many cells. This thing takes up quite a bit of space, but only in metabolically active cells. And as we go through, you're going to notice uh, why, because the endoplasmic reticulum deals with certain things that you would associate with metabolically active cells. Another thing we need to talk about is a cistern. Now, when students are learning uh, microbiology or anatomy or any sciences, they tend to get bombarded and overwhelmed by terms. A cistern is not a specific term to biology, okay? By definition, a cistern is a reservoir, a tank or container for storing or holding water or other liquids. So it's not specific towards anything biological. What it is is that when people start naming things in the human body or in biology, they look for existing terms that they can then associate with what we find in our sciences. And so in anatomy, a cistern is a reservoir or receptacle, okay, just like it is normally, for some natural fluid in the body. It's an extensive network of flattened membranous sacs or tubules in the ER. Now we're taking a look at the ER lumen or cisternal spaces. Now the ER lumen, lumen is a fancy term for hollow opening. So anytime you hear lumen in your study of anatomy or your study of micro or whatever, it is a hollow opening, okay? It's just a hollow opening. So opening inside the cisterns is the ER lumen or a cisternal space. It usually forms a single internal compartment continuous with space between outer and inner membrane of the nuclear envelope. All that just to get to the two basic types of the endoplasmic reticulum. The ER membrane and lumen house lots of enzymes, okay? Lots and lots of enzymes. And enzymes are used as catalysts, catalysts for different types of chemical reaction. Most eukaryotic cells contain two distinct forms of ER, and this is probably what you remember from high school and middle school, which would be rough ER and smooth ER. Now, rough ER is continuous with the nuclear membrane. It has ribosomes. Ribosomes attach to the rough ER. It attaches to the outer surface, which gives it that studded or rough look. It is very important to the creation or synthesis, the making of, and assembling of proteins. Some proteins will be attached to carbohydrates to form glycoproteins. The proteins created by the rough ER are either used internally or they're exported. They're either used within the cell or they're kicked out. Ribosomes are small structures made of protein and RNA. And now we need to look more at ribosomes because we just talked about ribosomes being part of rough ER, right? So ribosomes are small structures made of protein and RNA. They provide enzymatic and structural support. They link amino acids to form proteins. So basically, what ribosomes do is they, they are protein manufacturers. They are protein factories. And so when you're taking a look at rough ER, it's rough because of the ribosomes. 
the ribosomes deal with proteins, and so you would expect the rough ER to, of course, deal with proteins, right? So ribosomes are not just on the ER. They're just not found in the endoplasmic reticulum. They're also scattered throughout the cytoplasm, throughout the cell juice, and can be found bound to also the endoplasmic reticulum. So you see ribosomes all around the cell, and of course, the rough ER. If the ribosomes give rough ER its name, and we have smooth ER, what do you think is missing in smooth ER? Well, if ribosomes were what caused rough ER to be rough ER, smooth ER is smooth because it lacks ribosomes. And if it lacks ribosomes, then it doesn't deal with protein. Now, actually, let's get into our description. So you have to think like this, by the way. You have, okay, this one plus one equals two, then what about this, what about that, okay? So smooth ER is going to extend from the rough ER. It's more tubular than the rough ER, does not have ribosomes and appears smooth, and it's going to synthesize phospholipids, fats, and steroids. In liver cells, it will help release glucose into the bloodstream. It's going to help inactivate or detoxify drugs and other bad stuff. And also, FYI, it stains poorly, so it's very hard to see with a light microscope. So that's going to conclude our quick look at endoplasmic reticulum. If you like this series, please be sure to click that subscribe button, click that like. Also, be sure to check me out on social media. All the links are down below. And of course, like I said, I am currently running for Texas State Representative, District 127. So be sure to check that out. And until later, have fun studying out there and goodbye for now.